What's up, gang? Today we're going to talk about zenithal lighting or zenithal priming, also known as pre-shading to some folks. We're going to get into my interpretation of the practice. I'll talk about the actual scientific meaning of zenithal, but basically I want to convey my approach to the application, how I use it, why I use it. We'll also examine a couple of different ways to do the application as well as a few different views. So let's get into it, shall we? All right, let's imagine it's a nice, bright, sunny summer day, pretty clear skies, no overcast, and the sun is right above you. Let's define zenith. The time at which something is most powerful or successful, the point in the sky or celestial f sphere directly above an observer, basically the highest point reached by a celestial or other object. So it's like right at its highest point, right? Now, let's take a look at the white spots on my forehead, my nose, the tops of my ears, the shoulders, the most extreme top facing portions of the figure are going to be highlighted. Now let's say we move myself 45 degrees over. Now we're highlighting at a 45 degree angle in a stylized world with the yellow markings that are about to pop up here. Now we're seeing a more broad kind of exaggerated highlight on these areas. What that does is gives you more detail to pay attention to more surface area for your miniature to pop etc so we actually end up priming at a 45 degree angle to give more detail to the miniature now let's look at some different light sources here this is a simple top down literally zenith light right here notice that there's really not much character to this miniature it's very bland You've got really stark, bright light on the very top of his head, the top of his shoulder, the tops of the backpack. You're barely seeing any light touch the backs of his feet, even though there's plenty of surface area for this miniature to show off all of its beautiful detail. Your highlights are only going to be at the very top surfaces. And it's kind of boring, frankly. So we really don't prime like this unless there's some kind of story being told now here's a 45 degree light look at all that detail you can see it's got tons of surface area to work with you're gonna have a lot of contrasting colors going back and forth you still have really nice shadows going on but because we just simply moved it to a 45 degree angle now we're getting all kinds of character into this miniature now let's consider something directly 90 degree light now we're getting into like object source lighting okay this isn't going to be any type of natural light this might be a i don't know a volcano or something all that highlight is on the right side of the miniature his left and it's all shadow on the other side conversely we can do a top up lighting or a bottom up lighting i should say it's a really dramatic source. Maybe he's walking over a lava pit or some kind of toxic sludge and that, that lighting is casting up. So all of the shadow is actually at his zenith. Now let's talk about spray priming. Incoming crappy cell phone footage. This is me just using a rattle can to do a basic prime job here. I'm starting off with black, flat black. Um, yes, it's Michigan. It's winter. I'm in shorts. I'm actually also barefoot, but oh well. So make sure you get a good coverage, nice even coverage, about 12 to 16 inches away from the miniature. There he is, primed up. We've all primed the minis before, okay? But here's where the magic comes in. Now we're going to switch to white. I'm going to check the wind here. Make sure that you're spraying with the wind. It'll help things a lot. Now, I've got the can at a 45 degree angle. I'm spraying about 16, 18 inches away from the mini. That's a little far, but it still worked out for me. And just give it a couple of spritzes back and forth. Remember to pump, pump the can's trigger so that you're not getting too crazy. Now pay attention to this detail shot here. It's very textured, okay? Very textured. 
Now, let's move on to the airbrush real quick. I'm going to use my Badger Renegade Chrome. This is a size 5 needle. It's great for base coating. Simple, over-the-counter air, airbrush setup. Of course, Badger Steiner Res self-leveling black primer. Some of the best on the market. Load up your airbrush. Don't need to dilute this stuff just right out of the bottle. Give a little testy test there. And just like we did with Rattle Can, we're going to spray the crap out of the mini, get a good even coat of black on there. Just going to speed it up a little bit here because we've all primed a mini before. But the name of the game is make sure that you get a good clear coat. Then you let that dry and of course we'll move on to white. Back to Steinal Res again. This stuff is a little difficult through an airbrush but that's inherent with any white paint. Fill up your brush, test it out. And again, we're going to spray it a 45 degree angle as I'm showing here. But I'm going to lift the mini up here because it's impossible to spray. I'm literally horizontal with my table right now because I have a top down camera. So just pump your brush. You know, um, Notice my finger, if you can see it at any point, I'm, I'm going pst, pst, you know, with the trigger. Do it nice and even passes. We'll just make sure that we spray a good even coat. If you have to move up and down vertically on the miniature, that's fine. Don't change your angle that you're holding your brush. Remember to keep that 45 degree angle towards the miniature. As soon as you roll your wrist back and change that angle or roll it forward top down, it's completely gonna screw it up. Now I do go top down here. But that's just to intensify the very, very top of the highlight. That'll give you a little more brightness on the top. It's good to do that just to kind of get a little more intensity. But you can see the shadows. Here it is next to the rattle can. I got the rattle can on the right. We got the airbrush on the left. Notice how much smoother the airbrush is. Now there's no right or wrong with this, in my opinion. I prefer the airbrush method because it's smoother. If you're doing some sort of texturing though, that pre-shading that, that rattle can gives you that kind of texture to it, it can be beneficial depending on what you're painting. So don't discount rattle can. It is a viable option and it's much cheaper than an airbrush setup. But for me, with competition painting, I really like to use the airbrush for my priming. Now, let's talk about inks. You can nix the Steinle Res White, go to an ink. You can use duller rounding. You can use whatever you want. I just have scale, so I'm gonna use scale. I don't dilute it. I don't do anything. I just go right into the pot. A Couple of drops in there. Treat it just like you're spraying any other paint. It is gonna be quick through the brush, so I back off or tighten the aperture a little bit. Same application method. I'm going to speed it up here in a second because we've all seen this before, but I do want to give you guys a second to really pay attention to how thin this stuff can be. So don't get aggressive and start spraying it hardcore. You know, do a couple of passes, rotate the miniature, let it dry. By the time you t rotate around back to the front there, you're going to get, it's going to be dry. That's what I meant to say. And then of course I did a top down there as well. Notice that color is really pungent. Ink is very, very pigment thick, pigment rich. So it's going to look very, very bright at first, but as it dries, it'll knock back a little bit. So this is the rattle can. That's the Steinle Res airbrush primer, and that's the ink. I don't know if you can tell from this angle, but the difference in texture and smoothness is very drastic. Again, this one is the rattle can. This one is Steinle Res Airbrush Primer, and this one is Ink. Now, notice the texture change between the three of those. It's up to you to decide whether or not you want that texture. Either you're going to decide, I really want something smooth and clean, like say a Space Marine, but maybe you're doing some kind of alien skin or something. That texture from that rattle can could actually help you out. It's not a big deal. Here's the one thing that I have an issue with when it comes to rattle can and that texture that you get. There's a big difference in smoothness, which I'm going to show you here with these Necrons. Notice the one on the left. That one I bought 
uh, second hand. It was pre-primed already with rattle cam. The one on the right is one that I primed myself. Notice all that texture. You actually lose some detail as far as your shadows go because that texture kind of doles out your highlights. So in the case of something like a Necron or a Space Marine, I actually do not want that texture at all. But if he was doing something rusty or crazy, it'd be okay. So it's really, it's personal preference, but I just wanted to illustrate side by side what it looks like uh, rattle can versus airbrush priming. To me, it's really up to the person, the artist. It's up to you to decide what you want from your miniature. If you don't mind that texture, that's fine. Now the other thing I'm sure a lot of you are thinking right now, well it was 44 degrees in Detroit and it's cold, you're really far away from the mini when you were spraying with that rattle cam. I did that specifically to illustrate the most common mistake with rattle cam priming, is that people tend to hold the can too far or too close. If you hold the can too close to the miniature, obviously your miniature is going to get sopping wet with primer. You're going to lose a ton of detail, so a lot of times people will pull it back and spray farther out, causing that texture. Plenty of people can spray prime without an issue with rattle cam. I still use rattle cam for all my terrain, and if I'm doing something massive, like a big old batch painting project, it's perfectly fine to use a rattle cam. I'm not saying rattle cam is the villain here, but you do have to be aware of the difficulties that can result from using a rattle cam. That texture, overspraying, losing any type of detail in the miniature, etc. But then you have to also consider the stylizing of the zenith. Is the zenith what I want? Do I want it to be an extreme top-down lighting or not? Or do I want it? tip it off 45 degrees and hit more of that detail. The other thing, most people think that a zenithal prime is strictly for pre-shading, when in fact that's not the case. You can pre-shade the miniature, take a picture of it, and then have it on your cell phone and go to town with opaque paint, using that picture to kind of give you a roadmap to look back to, to reference so that you can see where you should have your highest highlights and your deepest shadows. Conversely, you can also use your airbrush and transparent paints or even inks or even thinning down opaque paints to a transparency level where those pre-shaded highlights and shadows are actually going to work for you with really thin layers going over it, building up to that brighter highlight. There are so many different things you can do with zenithal priming, zenithal highlights, or zenithal pre-shading. Personally for me, 9 times out of 10, I'm using my airbrush, I'm using Stino Res Black, and then I might dip into the inks if I'm doing a competition piece, but if it's just a general tabletop use, I'm using purely Stino Res Primer. You can use whatever airbrush primer you want, or whatever rattle can you want. Honestly, Whatever works for you and that you can afford will be just fine. Just know that there are different effects deciding on which to use. That's all I got for you on the zenithal topic. I know it was kind of boring with all the pictures, but it's more of a discussion topic than a demonstration topic. I hope it was clear enough for you to understand the difference between zenithal lighting, zenithal highlighting, and zenithal pre-shading. And with that, I'd like to invite you guys to come check out all of my content. I am a Twitch streamer, part of the Long War Network, and I stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm also going to Saturdays. I'm also over on Instagram, as well as on Patreon, as this is my full-time job. Speaking of Patreon, you can do one-on-one -on -one lessons with me there, or I also offer a bunch of different tiers. Some of them have swag packs where you get miniatures mailed to your door, or even tools like paints and brushes, etc. It's how I keep doing this, how I keep being able to create content for all of you, as well as travel the country teaching at the conventions that I teach at. I will be at Adepticon this year. I'm sorry my classes are sold out, but... I am available for one-on-one -on -one coaching as well at the con. 
just contact me via my email or Discord. I also want to give a shout out to all my patrons here. Thank you all so, so much. You see them listed here on the screen. Without you guys, I literally couldn't do this, so I appreciate it. Stay tuned. I'll be back next Friday with another video, and I hope you enjoyed. Please make sure to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below on any of your thoughts on the videos. Appreciate it, gang.